My first guest is actually the daughter of Baywatch icon David Hasselhoff. Growing up in the spotlight, she challenged unreasonable beauty standards that she saw in Hollywood and beyond. She was only 14 when she hit the runway as a successful curve model. Now Haley Hasselhoff is making her own history as the first curvy model to land a European cover of Playboy. With her Instagram show, Redefine You, a conversation for well-being, Haley continues to push these boundaries with the hope of inspiring women and girls to face their fears and value themselves just the way they are, or we are, right here and right now. And right now, joining us from her home in Los Angeles, please welcome Haley Hasselhoff. So good to have you on. Congratulations on this. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on and to be speaking with you today on such an important topic. Absolutely. You know, I got to start with the fact that you're on the cover of Playboy. So I'm imagining that included some nudity and a very, because I, 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 I did see the pictures, Haley, and they're beautiful. And I thought to, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to you're myself, trying, you're trying to go around that for a <laughs> I got it for the articles. I stayed for the photos, but, <laughs> you know, but I was curious. It was Topless. Oh, 100% tasteful. But Thank nevertheless, you know, you've got this powerful um, message and brand. Were you at all worried that, oh gosh, people are going to just look for the revealing photos and not the revealing message behind the photos? You know, of course. I, you know, it's the first time I've ever done a shoot like this, and I've been in this industry since I was 14. Um, but, you know, when with, with change and with making a movement, there's always going to be this fear of the unknown, and there's always going to be people who are going to accept it, and there's always going to be people who are going to resist it. But yeah. what I did the movement for was to start the conversation again about size inclusivity and that beauty comes in all different shapes and sizes. And I feel like that's the response that we were able to get, and most importantly, Importantly, you have to remember we shot this cover during a global pandemic when our ideas of our self-image and our self-worth and our social anxiety are being heightened. So to be able to make this sort of stamp and movement during this period of time, not only in my life as a 20-year-old woman today, but also just during this, this period with this global pandemic, it was a very impactful piece. So as I understand it, the shoot took place when it was in Paris. And yeah. when you got there, and I was stunned to hear it, even though they knew the groundbreaking nature of this cover, even though they knew your size, because for people who don't, when you do these shoots, they'll ask you for your size and your measurements. I've gone through all of that. Right. You got there, and there weren't items there that were size appropriate or, or that were fit, that would fit you. How did, how did that happen? You know, there's still a long way to go when it comes to availability for fashion. And that's something that I speak about very often as a fashion host for multiple different platforms. But one of the biggest things was, you have to remember, we were we were juggling around dates when it came to COVID, when we were safe for all of us to be in the same city. Um, you know, the, the stylist, Veronica, she was gorgeous and she did an amazing job, but she was able to secure pieces that were more so the accessories and the cape. But when it came down to actually fitting my figure in this lingerie it's all me it came from my wardrobe and it actually to be honest with you it made me feel more confident and comfortable on the set anyway because I already felt good in these pieces and I've done a lot of research beyond the years of growing up as a curved woman with a bigger bust and having to find the right brands that have availability yeah. for my size that are also sexy and beautiful and available for my size um, and it, it's something that's funny enough because it was a suitcase case that obviously was traveling along with me. So it wasn't like I aimed to just have these pieces. These pieces really do travel with me. Well, because I mean, you know, but that's such a powerful are. moment that you turned into a positive because I can't imagine. Here you are, you're the cover, you're the star of the magazine and you go in and they don't have things that will fit you. I've done shoots where as a brown woman, a woman of color, a black woman, you know, the makeup artist didn't have a foundation to match my skin. And you, you kind of shrink in a little bit thinking, you don't know that, you know, this color, this form does exist. You turn that moment into a positive and yet another empowering rule-breaking moment for yourself. 
Oh, definitely. I mean, my manager was like running to the hotel to grab more pieces from my wardrobe. And, you know, we made it into a fun and positive moment. At the end of the day, I'm so used to it. And it's sad to say that I'm used to coming wow. on to set and sometimes not having the right pieces of availability because of my size. But I think that's why we're here today. Yeah. You know, we are making this movement to be able to represent more size inclusivity and to be able to make it the norm so there is more availability out there for fashion and beyond. Not only the message that it gets to relate to women and in, in their self-love and in their journey, but also relates back into the message of the fashion industry that the average size woman in the world is a 14, 16. So it's about time to kind of get onto the, the bandwagon Absolutely. over here. And it's crazy how long we've been having this conversation. A part of the beauty, um, I guess the, the, the desirability to have the perfect figure, I think in some ways came from shows like Baywatch, which made your father a global superstar. Guys wanted his abs. Women wanted to have the bodies like Pamela Anderson and the stars from there. How did that impact you watching, I mean, just these bodies of perfection, but knowing inside uh, you didn't identify yourself as that? You know, it's funny because I get asked this question a lot and it really doesn't register within my own personal journey just because I was so young when my father was shooting Baywatch and there was really only so much love and light on set and respect. And that's a television series in itself. And as an actress, you know, that is uh, them embodying characters and roles and, and their own personal journey. But within my journey and growing up in Los Angeles and being able to kind of find my grounding within my self-love, it really stems from my idea behind behind my relationship with my mental health and my mental well-being. And, you know, we have challenges of being told that society's standards of beauty is nothing above a specific size. And so I was able to kind of find my own path by saying, I want to be different. I love being me. And if me means that I'm a specific size, size 14 and above, then that is beautiful just the way that it is. I also had the beautiful blessing at becoming a plus size model at 14. When you start to identify yourself with your peers and not understanding why you don't look like the person next to you. So I found out about this secret sort of industry where there was voluptuous, toned, beautiful role models I could look right. up to. And I said to myself, it's time to actually speak up more about this. Well, to and your give point, this though, that's now. been a secret. And part of the reason it's a secret is because we don't see it in TV. We don't see it in magazines like the one you're on the cover. Would you, if you had to do it again, would you have liked to have seen Baywatch have a curve model or a woman that fit that 12 to 14, 14, 16 size that you are now representing and using your platform to highlight? Of course. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think that, that you, you, you're you talking so much about rule breaking, right? Well, we are developing in the TV and film industry as it comes. There's still a lot of work to be done, but thankfully we are in a place now where you do see on the call sheet that there is somebody that is curved or that you are identifying somebody as being beautiful and not just categorized by her size. Right. With the... Um... I think the platform of Instagram that you use so masterfully in communicating with your fans, you've talked about body dysmorphia, which is not easy to do in a news story, on a talk show, because it does require people to have a full understanding of how do you explain body dysmorphia? Lizzo, for example, is talking openly about it as well. You know, with body dysmorphia, I think it's different for each person. So it's first off by saying, I validate you and your feelings towards what you think about your body. Um, but with body dysmorphia, the, the, the best way I think you can probably explain it is you become obsessive with this idea of a perceived self-image. And so it's really about finding a toolbox to go back to on those challenging moments when you really do talk derogatorily towards your body. You know, we're always going to be ever evolving. Our body and our relationship with that body is always going to evolve. So it's really important that we stick true to making sure that we take time for ourselves to find a toolbox to always revert back to on those challenging moments. And when you see the photos of yourself on the cover of Playboy, what do you tell yourself? What do you see when you see what you've evolved I to? I say, you know what, girl? I'm so proud of you for celebrating your body in the here and now during a global pandemic. You have to remember, it challenged even my idea about radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. We were in lockdown in London, and then obviously, you know, I traveled over to Paris during lockdown in Paris, and it was this idea of 
I'm so proud of myself for wanting to celebrate myself in such an artful way. And what I hope from this cover is that women people are able to then want to be able to celebrate their body in whatever way feels most authentic. This was how it felt most authentic to me in my journey, but that's not going to be everybody's journey. So I want to encourage you to find how to be able to relate self-love back into your daily routine. Well, you know, you've done a great job of spreading the word and using your platform. The Instagram show you have is called Redefine You. Haley, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.